Amen. If you want to follow along in your Bibles with me, I'm going to be reading from the Gospel according to John, the whole ninth chapter, verses 1 through 41. The Gospel according to John, chapter 9, verses 1 through 41, the familiar story of the man born blind receiving his sight. And it says, he walked along and he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered them, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work for the works of him who sent me. While it is day, night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud over the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. He went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, it is he. Others were saying, no, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes and said to me, go to wash in Siloam. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? And he said, I do not know. They brought him to the Pharisees, the man who had, been formerly, who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. And he said to them, he put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who was a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So that again, they said to the blind man, what do you say about him? It was you whose eyes were opened. He said, he is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We do not know. We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age. Ask him. So for a second time they called the man who had been born blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are the disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, here is the astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to the one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began had it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. 
Jesus heard that they had driven him out. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? And the blind man answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. And Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and he is the one speaking with you. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. And Jesus said, I came into the world for judgment so that those who do not see may see. And those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard him say this. And they said, surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would not have sin. But if you say, we see, your sin remains. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. This morning we have the story of the man born blind. The man who was pitied, whose life was changed forever. And I don't want to get too personal with you this morning, but I want to ask you to think about that life-altering experience that you've had. The kind of experience that changes everything from that day forward. Where you reach a point in your life where the world around you is the same world, the same people, the same places, but to you, it all looks different. The meanings have changed. The world around you has changed. And you know that you can never go back to the way life was before the change happened. It's a life-altering experience. For some people, it's a diagnosis of an illness in the family, or, or a divorce, or it's something, a, a calamity, some type of natural disaster, or death, or, or something maybe positive or neutral, like leaving for college for the first time, or <clears throat> spending a week away from your family when you were a kid, and realizing your independence. There's some kind of life-altering experience that we all have that changed us at some point, and we could never go back to seeing the world the same way. The meanings changed. Everything changed. One day a man was approached by a group of disciples, and this man named Jesus, and his world was changed forever. Jesus caused the man to see, to use his gift of vision for the first time in his life, and for this man, the world stood still. Do you understand what it means the world stood still? When the news comes, when things change, when it befalls you, the world seems to stand still. Pausing just so you can have that time to absorb it, to take it all in. So he paused, looking at the world with new eyes, looking for the first time. After healing the man born blind, it seems like Jesus kind of steps away from the whole story. And you follow this man born blind as he bears witness to his, his sight, the, the, the miracle that has happened to him. And people say, that's not that guy. It's somebody else that looks like him. Or how could this be? And then, of course, the interrogation by the Pharisees twice. And when they throw him out, when they finally say that's it and throw him out, just because he's telling the truth. Then Jesus shows up in the picture again, comes back, not only to open his eyes, but to open the eyes of his heart. Helps him to see just a little bit more than he helped him a few days earlier. Because of his blindness, this man was forced, we're told in the story, to live as a beggar to sit at the gate of the city, perhaps, and to be a burden on the community who supported him by their pity for him because he couldn't see. A lot of blind people are pretty resourceful. And this man probably was the same, you know, his other four senses are heightened, and he's using them. I mean, he made it all the way out to wherever he was that he begged every day, and he was obviously living, so he was able to eat and probably stayed pretty healthy. But unlike today, there were no social programs organized for the blind. There was no seeing-eye dogs. There's no 
way for him to learn Braille or anything like that. He was just a beggar. And this man and, and the people around him just accepted, I think, that this was his lot, that this is the way it was for him. And some even believed, as the Pharisees did, that he was to blame for his blindness. Pitied and outcast as he was, a man named Jesus had compassion for him. Not even had compassion for him, but the scripture says he was born blind so that the glory of the Lord may be revealed. He had value for this man. The man born blind had value to Jesus, and Jesus placed that value upon him. Now we have to take this opportunity in this passage to talk about Jesus' character. Because he treated this man the way the world didn't. He treated this man the way he treats every one of us. Jesus doesn't skip over people. Jesus doesn't look the other way. Jesus doesn't try to put the poor and the needy out of his mind. Jesus didn't ignore even the least of these. He walked this earth to give us an example of compassion and of the heart of God. He didn't pity the blind man. He didn't pity the blind man. He valued him. And he used him to reveal God's glory. But for Jesus, healing this man brought more heat onto him. Because it says in the scriptures, anyone that was caught confessing Jesus Christ would be cast out of the synagogue. Right. And he knew what he was doing. The Lord knew what he was doing when he needed the mud in his hands, which was forbidden on the Sabbath, and healed the blind man, opened his eyes. The man born blind could have waited one more day to receive his sight. He was born blind after all. And he was of age, as his parents say. He wasn't a young man. A, a child. But Jesus didn't wait. He healed him on the Sabbath and called into question for those who bear witness to this event what does it really mean to be faithful to God? And then we know what follows. Jesus probably knew what was going to happen afterwards. The interrogation. The disbelief. The man just by telling the truth bearing witness confessing that God and that Christ had done this for him, that this man named Jesus had healed him. Even making the invitation to the Pharisees, do you want to become one of his disciples? Mm -hmm. And Jesus probably knew they'd refuse. But it wasn't all for naught. Because the man born blind was not only eyes, had his eyes opened, he had his heart opened as well. And at the end of the story, if no one else recognized who Jesus was, this blind man did. And he saw. And he moved from calling him sir to calling him Lord. He testified to who Christ was. He tried to teach the Pharisees, but they wouldn't listen. Because unlike the man born blind, they couldn't see Jesus. They couldn't see Jesus. They could look upon Jesus as a man standing there and they could tell you the features of his face and body and clothing, but they couldn't see Jesus. It was in this way that they were blinder than the man born blind ever was. The Pharisees had a different form of blindness caused from stoned hearts, from closed minds that kept them from really seeing Jesus. Jesus talks about this at the end of the passage. Jesus tried to open the eyes of their hearts the same way he opened the eyes of the man born blind. But they wouldn't look. They couldn't see. Because for them, they had no prior frame of reference to understand that this was the Son of God. You see, they couldn't see beyond their own set of beliefs that they already had set up for them, that they were comfortable with, that they were happy with, that they could deal with and understand. They, they couldn't see beyond their own imagination that possibly God could do something beyond what they could think up. They were blind. The gift of sight for someone who is born into blindness is a very big challenge to receive after having lived a life only knowing the four senses. There's, if you've never laid eyes on an object, you may know how it feels how it smells, how it tastes, how it sounds.
but you don't know what it looks like. In the, in the film First Sight with Val bah, Kilmer, bah, he plays this blind bah. man who was born, who has almost been uh, blind from birth, and receives his sight in an operation. And the majority of the story of the film is how he goes about learning the world in new ways. You can hold an object in front of him, and he'll look upon it, just like you and I would look upon it, but he has no idea what to call it until he can touch it, and he realizes that's an apple, that's a fork, because he has no imagination or vision of what things look like because he's never seen them before. He's just felt them and tasted them. So I imagine it would have been similar for this man, having no prior frame of reference for anything that he was looking upon when he came up out of the waters of Siloam and, and looked upon the sky and the water and the earth for the first time. I, I think it must have overcome him yeah. because he never had a frame of reference to know what those things looked like. He probably bent down and touched whatever was near him just to, to get his bearings, to know where he was. When he touches something, he sees what it is. And now that he sees with his own eyes, he's having to rethink the whole world, to relearn everything that he once knew in the blind world and convert it into the seeing world. It was the same for him spiritually. You see, prior to this event, he didn't know Jesus. He didn't call upon Jesus to come and heal him. Jesus just happened upon him one Sabbath day and healed him. He had no prior frame of reference about Messiah or Lord or who this character was. But unlike the Pharisees, he was open. He was open and willing to make the jump from calling Jesus Sir to calling Jesus Lord. To make the leap in his life from that guy who healed me to the Lord of all and the Lord of my life. He went from, all I know is I see, to Lord, I believe. The deeper sense of sight. You know, when we read this story, most of us can identify with this blind man. Or we, to some degree, we think we can. We have been in a place of great need, where it was only God who could heal us and make us whole again. And some of us have even been healed and given glory to God in that healing. We may also have been called to account for our faith like the blind man was. Yeah. We have been asked, who is this Jesus? Who do you say that he is? Right. Yeah. People talk about, I found the Lord. When that really wasn't the case for the blind man, the Lord found him. <laughs> he, he didn't ask to be healed. Jesus just did it. That's right. And then all the trouble started for the man who was formerly blind. But for some powerful reason he was equal to the task. He just told the truth. He told the simple story of what had happened to him. Just, just the basic truth. And he used reason and fortitude when he was in front of the Pharisees. He was strong. Most of us, to some degree, realize that we can identify with this blind man. But more of us can identify with a lot, to a larger degree with some other characters in the story. The Pharisees. My Lord. This is where the pastor speaks to me the most and convicts me in my life. Most of us have never been blind, first of all, to identify with the blind man. In terms of our physical senses, we have all five senses intact. We can pretty much provide for ourselves. We can do in almost every conceivable way what we need done for our own selves. You know, even in this world today, we've come up with our own version of how to be in a relationship, with our own sort of virtual love that we create on our own without God's help. We can be so self-sufficient to putting all our needs before us on our own. But that's blindness. That's a world of blindness. Yeah. Take it one step further. Some of us think we got Jesus. We think we've got Jesus, and we lick the bottom of the suction cup and stick him right up there on the dashboard, and he's kind of like a charm that goes with us everywhere we go. You know, a charm to protect me and to give me blessings. I got my Jesus. We do the same thing with the Bible. I'm not 
worried about those hungry people living in a dumpster behind the Dunkin' Donuts. I'll just go read them a scripture. <laughs> and then it's not my business anymore. We're out there causing our own blindness, friends. It's blindness. God wants to reveal God's glory to us, but we won't look or we can't see. 